Father Moses, who was a black man in Egypt, and God raised him up and commissioned him to lead the children out of Egypt into Israel. He was a black man. Okay, we're gonna read verse 15, and we have it right here. Uh, get a lie, read it. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 15. Mm -hmm. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, mm -hmm. to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes, which I command thee this day. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. Now quickly, are curses a good thing or a bad thing? Bad. God says he's going to put curses upon us. Let's read some of these curses. Let's jump to verse 68. We're going to go back and forth. Joel, I need you to stay with me. Okay? We're going to go to verse 68. So the Arab man and the ancient Hamitic tribe sold us to the white man. How did we become scattered abroad. Let's read that. Verse 68. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. God says he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. The first time we went into Egypt, we walked and we walked out. We walked in, we walked out. So what is God talking about? You have to go to the Bible. Go to the book of Exodus chapter 20 verse 2. Write this down. Those of you who love God, don't take our word for it. Write these scriptures down. I know some of you are recording, but you should also write. Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Go ahead. Ex Exodus chapter 20, verse 2. Mm -hmm. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt, out of the house of bondage. What does God call Egypt? The house of bondage, slavery. Now let's go back to right here. Oh, beautiful. It's right here on the screen for you. The back of the U.S. dollar bill, they have a pyramid. Why do they have a pyramid there? The pyramids are found in Egypt, and this one is in Washington, D.C. So they know who we are, and they know who they are. Okay? Get me verse 68 again. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there... You shall be sold unto your enemies. God says we're not going to see our homeland again. Right here. Thou shalt see it no more again as a nation of people. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. So God said the people that were buying us, those are our enemies. But in modern day Christianity, they tell you that we're all one under Jesus and those are your friends. Friends don't come to your country and take your gold. Friends don't come to your country and enslave you and colonize you and give you a false image of their God. They don't do that. Enemies do that. And that's why it's written in the Bible. Okay? Go back. These are ships. Slave ships. Where they took the sons and daughters of Ghana and brought them to America, the Caribbean islands. And then many of you were left back and you were colonized. Okay? Negroes for sale. Look. White man right here selling us into slavery. These are auctioning blocks. Remember in Joel we read they cast lots for my people? In Deuteronomy 28, 68, it says you were sold unto your enemies. This is us being sold right here. And these are the advertisements for the auctions right here. Go ahead. More ships. They had us like sardines. So if you had to use the bathroom, guess what? You used the bathroom on your brother. When the woman had their menstrual or had to give birth, they had to do that on their brothers and sisters. We were totally mistreated. Why? Because the hand of God was against us. Come on. Let's go back to this. Read it again from the beginning. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 68. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. Mm -hmm. By the way whereof I spake unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. Mm -hmm. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies mm -hmm. for bond men and bond women. Stop right there. We're going to come back to that. I want verse 16. One verse 16. I want, I want to paint a picture of exactly what happened during the slave trade. 
When we were sold on auction and blocks, sold to our enemies, there's something that they did with us. Give me verse 16. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 16. Mm -hmm. Curse shall thou be in the city. When they took us off the auction and blocks and they took us to the various islands and states, we were cursed in the city. Come on. Where's the, the plantation? You just had a picture of it. Right here. Cursed in the city, and what else? And cursed shall thou be in the field. What were we doing in the field, brothers and sisters? We were picking cotton. We were picking cotton, sugar cane, tobacco, corn. This was us. Cursed in the city and the field. Get me verse 32. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy 28, verse 32. Mm -hmm. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Your sons and the daughters will be given to another people. Who is the another people that we were given to? The Portuguese, the Dutch, the British, the French, the American Englishman. But I want to start with the Portuguese because they built something monumentous right here in Ghana. Something beautiful that's still up. And many of you, you're not insulted by that. There's something called Elmina Castle that the Portuguese built. Do you know who was in there? You were. You, Ivan's ancestors, your ancestors, your ancestors. You were all there. We were there. Our ancestors was there, shackled. Chains on our necks, chains on our wrists, chains on our legs. Mistreated, killed. It's still there, right there in Cape Coast, Elmina Castle. The ships would come in, they would load the ships with black Israelite bodies and carry those slaves into Jamaica, carry those slaves into Suriname, scattered throughout Bible prophecy. Now it's time to stop playing church. We've been playing Christian church for too long. The Bible's not a game. Now it's time to wake up. God is real. So are his curses. So the Bible says, Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people, and thine eyes shall look and fail with longing for them all the day long, and there shall be no might in thine hand, no might in your hand. You had no economic, no physical, no military might to redeem your children. You could not do nothing. That's why you had to fight five wars right here in Ghana with the British. And it's just not Ghana, Sierra Leone, Cameroon, Haiti, Jamaica. We always try to fight this man and guess what? He always wins. Why? Because the hand of God is against us because we won't repent. Get me verse 33. Verse 33. And the, the excuse me, the fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. So it says the fruit of thy land. I know when we think of this, we think of cassava, yam, fufu, jollof rice, right? All the vegetation you could grow and eat is more than that. It's not only that, but it's more than that. What happened to this? Weren't you once known as the Gold Coast? Who has all your gold? Who controls it? The other nations have your gold. It might be little remnants here, but who owns the contract to mine the gold in the mining um, fields? Isn't it the Chinese? Isn't it the white man? They control your gold. All of you should be rich. You're walking on natural resources. The earth here in Ghana is full of gold. But who owns the contracts? The other nations. God says the fruit of your land, read it again. The fruit of thy, the, excuse me, the fruit of thy land. We're gonna go back to that, Joel. Go ahead. Deuteronomy 28, 33. Mm -hmm. The fruit of thy land and all thy labors shall a nation which thou knowest not eat up, and thou shalt be only oppressed and crushed always. The man that controls the resources controls the minds of the people. Why? Because we need resources to survive. They control the gold, the cocoa, silver, diamonds, mag magnesium, limestone, rubber, fish, salt, oil, hydropower, timber, and, this, and bauxite. That's where a lot of you get your cell phones. Where is this written on? The CIA.gov. CIA.gov. Now, I want you to focus on this, cocoa, because we know this, you don't have it no more. But how about this right here? There was a man named Kwame Nkrumah. You guys are familiar with that name, of course. He wanted to control the manufacturing of cocoa. He wanted to manufacture it here, control the importing and exporting of this particular resource. The white man said, no, you will not. 
The white man who don't even belong in Africa is telling another black man what to do with his own resources. If that's not a curse from God, I don't know what else is. Because we're bigger than them, we're stronger than them. You watch MMA, you watch boxing, right? Y'all seen that? We dominate that. But why is this man ruling over us as a nation of people? Because the hand of God is against us. Okay, next slide. Give me verse, uh, did we finish verse 33? Yes, sir. Go to verse 37. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment, a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. So they call us cotton pickers. They call us niggers. They call us black. They call us African American. They call you Ghanaian. Where is that in the Bible? Where's those words in the Bible? God never called us that. God called us Israelites. That's what he called us. This is a shame. Look, this is what our people have become. I know you've seen this in America, right? You've seen this in America, the Caribbean island. Guess what? This is coming here. This is here in Africa right, right now. Whether it's Uganda, Liberia, we've took on this culture. We are a reproach. Our women are blonde in their hair. They hate themselves. The hair that God gave them, that woolly hair, the hair that God has, they hate to where they blonde their hair and they straighten out their hair. Our people hate their skin color to where they bleach their skins. That beautiful black and comely skin that King Solomon said he has, we hate that now. We hate the width of our nose, that wide nose that God gave us, we hate that. We hate that, we hate ourselves. Why, because our image have been destroyed. Remember what we read in Matthew 24 verse four. What Christ told us, we would be destroyed, we would be deceived. We have to return back to the Bible and love each other. Get me verse 34. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 34. So that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes which thou shalt see. Are you guys upset? Are you mad? I don't hear you. Are you mad? You should be mad. You're saying no. You right there. Why are you saying no? What's your name, brother? What's your name? You, you, right there with the black man. Yeah, yeah, you, you. What's your name? David. Ah, oh, David. Biblical name. You're not mad at the oppression of your people? You're not mad with Ibruni, the white man ruling over you, taking your resources? You're not mad? The, thank you. That's what I'm talking about. It says, so that thou shalt be mad for the sight of thine eyes, which thou shalt see. Because we look at all throughout the earth, we are the oppressed. God says you're not supposed to be living like this. The poor, God says we're not supposed to be living like this. Adultery, God says you're not supposed to be living like this. Murdering one another, God says you're not supposed to be living like this. Afflict, affliction, God says we're not supposed to be living like this. But we backed ourselves into a corner by not keeping God's laws. That's right. Get me verse, where's the verse by the king? Verse 36. Come on. Deuteronomy 28 verse 36. The Lord shall bring thee, and, the, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which, thou, which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. And there shalt thou serve gods, wood and other, stone. Other, serve other Excuse gods. Me, serve other gods, wood and stone. So God said he's going to carry us into these nations. We're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. Two of the world's largest religions is Christianity and Islam. Two of the world's largest re religions is Christianity and Islam. In Christianity, they have the wooden cross. In Islam, they have the stone. You guys seen the Kaaba stone, right? In Mecca, Mecca was one of the first largest slave ports, forts in Mecca. Okay, that's where they sold slaves, us, our people. That's where they sold us as slaves. Now, notice the beginning verse. It says, the Lord shall bring thee and thy king which thou shalt set over thee unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. So, yes, we had kings amongst us, we had princes amongst us that went into slavery. Come on. Deuteronomy chapter 28, verse 36. Mm -hmm. The Lord shall bring thee, and thy king which thou shalt set over thee, unto a nation which neither thou nor thy fathers have known, and there shalt thou serve other gods, wood and stone. That's called idolatry. Guess what? I was raised in idolatry. I was raised as a Roman Catholic, unfortunately. I used to bow down in front of this white image of Jesus Christ. And at one point, guess what? I had this on my wrist. I was in the midst of sin, out of ignorance, because that's what my mother taught me, because she didn't know better. 
God says we're going to serve other gods, wood and stone. Did God give us these things to serve? Absolutely not. Give me Psalm 78 verse 5. What did God give us? What did God give us? Psalm 78 and verse 5. The book of Psalms, chapter 78, verse 5. Mm -hmm. For he established a testimony in Jacob. God gave us a testimony in Jacob. A testimony is words. Like when you give your testimonial, those are words. God gave us a testimony in Jacob. Read. And appointed a law in Israel. And appointed a law in Israel. Go ahead. Which he commanded our fathers uh -huh. that they should make them known unto their children. Uh -huh. That the generation to come might know them. Uh -huh. Even the children which should be born. Uh -huh. Who should arise and declare them to their children. Uh -huh. That they may set their hope in God. Uh -huh. And not forget the works of God. Uh -huh. But keep his commandments. That's what the Bible's about. Laws, statutes, and commandments. So we went off from God. We didn't teach our children this. So we went into slavery. And we started serving other gods, wood and stone. Mainly Christianity and Islam. Next slide. You already read 37, get me verse 46. Yes, sir. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 46. Actually, before you get verse 46, give me 42, lend to thee. Deuteronomy 42. chapter 28, verse 43. Mm -hmm. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. The stranger that is within thee shall get up above thee very high. Oh, not the other nations above us? Yes, they are above us. You got to be honest with, your, honest with yourself. The white man rules the planet Earth. Why? Because the Earth was given to him to rule for a dispensation of time. Go ahead. And thou shalt come down very low. And we came down very low. Poverty. Look at this black man bending his knees down in the city begging for money. They come here, they take your resources, but then they call you poor. You just took, you just came to my country, took all my resources, and then you have the nerve to call me poor. You took my resources. Come on. He shall lend to thee. Verse 44. He okay. shall lend to thee. They shall lend to us through the banks. Uh-huh. And thou shalt not lend to him. Now, Kwame Nkrumah tried to change that. After the coup d'etat happened, when he was on his way to Vietnam and China, there was a coup d'etat here. You guys are probably familiar with your own history. You should be familiar with it. What happened? They disannulled the allegiance that they had with Guinea on the Eastern Bloc, and they went toward the Western Hemisphere and made a what? A covenant and an agreement with the IMF and the World Bank. Those are the people who run the money in this country. Those are the people that tell you your CDs is garbage compared to American money. This is garbage. In the eyes of the white man, this is nothing. It's nothing to him. It's garbage. He tells you 20 CDs is worth $1 in America. But who dictates that? Because I'm gonna, I'm gonna hit you on something. The American dollar is not backed up by gold. The American dollar is not backed up by gold. You have gold. So how can he come into your land and tell you what your money is worth when you have gold. Because he took all your gold. And he controls the whole planet Earth. Thus resulting in poverty. Thus resulting in him lending to you. And you borrowing from him and having to pay him back with interest. Because he controls the World Bank and he controls the IMF. That's what Kwame Nkrumah wanted to fight against. And they killed him. They killed him. He didn't die of... No heart attack, that's lies. They killed him. The same way they poisoned his chef, they poisoned him. Okay, jump down to verse 46. Wait, wait, read that, finish that, I'm sorry. Go yes, ahead. sir. Verse 44, he shall lend to thee, and thou shalt not lend to him. Uh -huh. He shall be the head. He shall be over you in a superior position. And thou shalt be the tail. And you shall be under him in a subordinate position. Go down to verse 46. Yes, sir. Verse 46. Mm -hmm. And they shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder. They shall be upon thee for a sign and for a wonder and upon thy seed forever. How do you know where you're at? There's signs for it. How do I know this is Adam TV? There's, this, there's a sign right here that says Adam TV. This one says GH1 TV. Signs let you know where you're at and where you're going. So where are we at and where are we going? We have to look at the signs. What are the signs? The curses. That's who we know. That's how we know that we are the Israelites. 
Look at our condition. Look out at our former condition. Look at our present and plan for the future. We know who we are based on the curses of the Bible. We are the only ones on this earth that suffer from these curses that we've been reading thus far. Read this again. Verse 46. Come on. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. Come on. And for a wonder. Read. And upon thy seed forever. And upon thy seed forever. What does that mean? Generational curses. But it's time to stop those generational curses. We can't let generational bad choices lead to generational curses. We must break those curses. So the Most High will alleviate some of those curses from us if we keep his commandments. Get me verse 47. Verse 47. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness. We don't serve God with joyfulness. Some of you right now, this is probably going in one ear, out the other. We don't serve God with joyfulness, but we serve Thanksgiving, birthdays, Mother's Day, Christmas, New Year's, all these different African spirituality concepts. We serve that with joyfulness. But we don't serve God's laws with joyfulness. We don't keep his high holy days. We don't keep Passover, Tabernacle, Feast of First Fruits, as it is written in the Bible. We don't do those things. The Sabbath day, we forgot about God. So what did God do to us? He forgot about us. Now you're in the hands of Ibruni. That's who controls you. Now we serve him. We're supposed to serve God the Father. Now we're serving Ubruni as your father, the white man. Go ahead. Yes, sir. Verse 47. Mm -hmm. Because thou servest not the Lord thy God with joyfulness and with gladness of heart for the abundance of all things. So whatever we need, we got to go to God. Read. Therefore shall thou serve thine enemies. Oh, there's that word again. God says we're going to serve our enemies. Enemies. Read. Which the Lord shall send against thee. So God sent them against us. Come on. In hunger. So when we need food, you got to go to your enemies. Oh, food. You got to go to your enemies. Some of you produce a lot of these foods here. Some of you do produce the foods here. Yes, you do. But can you export those foods to the other neighboring islands where your brothers were scattered in the diaspora without getting taxed? Do you control that, the manufacturing company? No, you don't. You don't control the licenses. No, you don't. Go ahead. In hunger mm -hmm. and in thirst. And in thirst. In America, we have Aquafina, Dasani, Fiji, Smart Water, and so forth. Over here, we have, lift that up, Verna. Is that called Verna? Verna. Verna. You also have Baltic. And on the back of it, it does say produced in Ghana. But who controls the import and exporting of that? The white man's hand is behind everything. The white man's hand is behind everything. Read on. And in nakedness. And nakedness. Your clothes that you have on your back. Where is your clothes made for? And if you don't mind, young man, I'm going to use you as an example. Let me see. Oh, yours don't even say where it's made. Unfortunately. Let me see yours, Ivan. What do we see here? Where do we see? You don't even have one. Lord have mercy. <laughs> this one don't have one. What? You get the point. You guys probably ripped it off because you probably heard this question. <laughs> Made in China, made in Italy, made in France, made in Taiwan, made in Bangladesh. The clothes in America, how come it doesn't say made from your brothers in Ghana, made from your brothers in Sierra Leone, made from your brothers in Liberia? They control the textile productions and importing and exporting of those goods. It's called a curse from God. Guess what? Many of you probably woke up this morning and used the bathroom. They even control the toilet paper. So what happened when the white man stops producing toilet paper? What you going to do? What you going to do? You, it's going to be a room smelling like you know what. All right, come on. Read. And in nakedness. Mm -hmm. And in wants of all things. So whatever you need, medicine, education, uh, security benefits from the government, you got to go to your enemies. You got to go to your enemies. You have to go to your enemies. That's why until this very day, the U.S. have gave Ghana over 100 millions in foreign aid. But that comes with a price. That comes with a price. We'll talk about that soon. That comes with a price. Meaning if you try to rise up like Kwame Nkrumah did, we're going to read about that. You get put down. Patrice, Patrice Lumumba, put down. Thomas Sankara, 
who looked up to, to, to Kwame Nkrumah. He was a, like a protege of Kwame Nkrumah. He got put down. A lot of, all the assassinations in Africa happened by the white man. Yes, it, it probably was a black man behind that trigger who pulled the gun, but who supported it? Who advocated it? Who instigated it? The white man. Because he understands that you have to go to him for the want of all things. So the minute you try to say, liberty! The minute you try to say, freedom! He comes for you and puts you to death. And then he replaces you. That's something that the sons and daughters of Africa has not realized yet. All the assassinations and assassination attempts, the white man has been behind it. You want US aid? You want foreign aid from the US? You're gonna have to dance to his music. You're gonna have to play to his tune. That's how the white man gets down. Come on. And in one of all things, uh -huh. and he shall put a yoke of iron. Oh, and he, the same man you gotta go to to learn religion, to learn about God, for food, for water, for clothes, he shall put a what? A yoke of iron. He shall put a yoke of iron. These are real pictures. This is not comic books, brothers and sisters. This man right here probably came right here from the Gold Coast. They put yokes of iron upon thy neck. Bible prophecy. God spoke it and it happened. God is not a man that he should lie. His word does not come back void. Once God speaks, everything is fulfilled. God says you shall have yokes of iron on your necks until you be destroyed. You are destroyed. I'm going to tell you why. Some of you might say no. Many of you probably grew up in the church system, even if you didn't, thinking that Jesus Christ is a white man. You call yourselves Ghanaian. That's not biblical. You divide yourselves amongst these tribes that are not biblical. You are not keeping God's laws right now, presently. You're not keeping God's laws. That's how we know we are destroyed people. A lot of you think there's a separation between the brothers here and the brothers in America. The brothers in the Caribbean islands, our brothers and sisters in Europe. Remember, we were taken from here and brought there. What is the difference? Because we got to ride on a slave ship, that makes us different. Makes us different? No. We are the sons and daughters of those Israelites, all of us. Okay? God says we shall have yokes of iron upon our necks until we be destroyed. Come on. Until he have destroyed thee. Come on. The Lord, verse 49, the yep. Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Now, notice God is getting specific. I want you to pay attention. Don't get tedious. Don't get lazy. Pay attention. God is going to, he's getting specific. He said, your enemy is going to put yokes of iron on your neck. He said, I'm going to bring a nation against thee from far. Go ahead. From the end of the earth. Uh-huh. As swift. As the eagle. As the what? As the eagle fly. As the eagle fly. The Portuguese. The Portuguese, Portuguese, Portuguese. What was their insignia, their symbol? The eagle! Who came after the Portuguese? The Dutch, the eagle. America, the eagle. Britain, the eagle. God said this would be their sign. Germany, the eagle. French, the eagle. Read it again so they could understand. Yes, sir. A lot of people think this is a fairy tale. A lot of us look at the Bible as a fake book of mythology. No, 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 no. Our brain has become mythology because we've been listening to the white man for too long. Come on. Deuteronomy 28, 49. Uh -huh. The Lord shall bring a nation against thee from far. Come on. From the end of the earth. Uh -huh. As swift as the eagle flyeth. As swift as the eagle flyeth. Come on. A nation whose tongue thou shalt not understand. When the Portuguese came here, we didn't speak Portuguese. We didn't speak Dutch. We didn't speak English. We didn't understand what they were talking about. They came with the Bible in one hand and the sword in the other. That's how they came here. We didn't understand their language. God is telling us that. Read. Verse 50. Skip that. Go back to, give me 64. Verse 64. Mm -hmm. Deuteronomy 28, verse 64. Come on. And the Lord shall scatter thee among all people, uh -huh. from the one end of the earth even unto the other. How did we get there? By way of ships. Come on. And there thou shalt serve other gods. Uh-huh. Which neither, excuse me, <clears throat> which neither thou nor thy fathers have known. Because we didn't know these gods. These is idolatry. We didn't know this stuff. All we knew was God's laws, statutes, and commandments. Come on. 
Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Even wood and stone. Verse 68 again, one more time. Yes, sir. Verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again with ships. So we went over this. God said he's going to bring us into Egypt again with ships. Slave ships. Slave ships. Come on. By the way whereof I spake unto thee. By the way Moses said it was going to happen, it happened. Moses said we we're going to have yokes of iron on our necks, it happened. Moses said we would be sold unto our enemies for bond men and bond women, it happened. Come on. By the way whereof I speak unto thee, mm -hmm. thou shalt see it no more again. You're not going to see your homeland Israel no more again as a nation of people. That's why currently right now, brothers and sisters, in the land of Israel, do you know what they're trying to do? Do you know what the white man, the Jewish man, is trying to do to our people? They're kicking them out, especially those who identify and call themselves Israelites. They're saying, no, time for you to get out. You guys don't belong here. Go back to the countries that you came from. This is our country. They're no different. The Jewish man is no different from his brothers. What do I mean by that? They have a pattern of colonizing countries. You think the Jewish man is different? Germany colonized Namibia. Cameroon, the French colonized Cameroon. Britain colonized Ghana. They all have a pattern of colonizing lands and taking it for their own. Moses says, thou shalt see it no more again. You will not see your homeland, Israel, again, as a nation of people. Read. And there you shall be sold unto your enemies. When you were taken from Elmina Castle, you were sold unto your enemies. Go ahead. For bond men, slave men, and bond women, and bond women, go ahead, and no man shall buy you, and no man shall buy you. What does that mean? Because in that same verse it says you shall be sold. That word buy means to save, redeem. It's not talking about a literal purchase with money. Because in the same verse it says you shall be sold to your enemies. God tells you nobody shall be able to save you from these curses. You have some. You have a group known as the Big Six. The main man. Kwame Nkrumah, the main man, and these are his brothers, okay? You have, pro, forgive me if I pronounce it wrong, uh, Obetsby, Obetsby Lamte, Dr. Aku Aje, Oferi Ata, J.B. Dankwa, and the sixth person is Akufu Ado. These were the big six that made up what's called the UGCC. He wanted to unite Africa. His ideology, he had a pan-Africanist ideology. Sort of what Marcus Garvey had. They both had the same ideology. He wanted to unite the tribes here. He wanted to unite the tribes. He knew that the tribes here in Ghana were separated by culture and certain linguistics. He knew that they were separated. He wanted to unite them. The big six was fighting against the hand of the oppressor. The same way Malcolm X in America did, Martin Luther King in America did, Sojourner Truth, Harriet Tubman, you heard of those names? Nat Turner, but over here you had Kwame Nkrumah, you had Thomas Sankara, Patrice Lumumba, all of them wanted to stand up for Africa against the oppressor. And what happened to them? They were killed. Why? Because God says it would be given unto the hand of our enemies. God says we'll give it to the hand of our enemies. Now one thing about Kwame Nkrumah, he was also a philosopher. He wrote a book called The Dark Days of Ghana. The Dark Days of Ghana, you could do your research. Many of you probably read the book already. The Dark Days of Ghana. And in that book he expressed how the hand of colonial, colonialism was inside of his back, wrapped around his spine. He also expressed how his his cook was killed mysteriously. He had fear for his life. He thought that he was being followed. He thought that somebody was looking through his mail. He thought that he would be poisoned. And later, he died of stress. After he left Guinea, he went to, I believe it was, uh, who was that European country? Uh, Belgium or Britain. All right, he went to some European country. I think it was Romania, I'm not sure. You guys can, you guys can, Romania. He went to Romania to seek help, and then he died later of illness. Okay? He wanted to rise up and alleviate our people, but he could not. Although he tried, he could not. There's only one person, one person, 
One person that could save us. And you know one thing about that? Let me go back to that book, The Dark Ages of Ghana. Because he said how the white man was after him, and he knew it. Everybody thought he was lying. Everybody thought, oh, Mom, my brother, it's a conspiracy theory. What is wrong with your mind? No, they love us. They love the black people of, of Africa. That's what his people said. Because it was his own people that started the coup d'etat. Lo and behold, give me that in Psalm 64, 65. I might be calling the wrong verse. The one about make their tongues fall upon them. Yep. There was something that happened in 1978. You had... Mr. Stockwell and a man called Seymour Hirsch, who worked for a particular newspaper in New York, they did the research themselves and find out from CIA, the same word that we read earlier down here, remember when we was going over the natural resources of Ghana? The CIA know what they have, why? Because they had a hand in this coup d'etat. Two white men in 1978 verified what Thomas Nkrumah was saying. Well, not Thomas Nkrumah, Kwame Nkrumah was saying. They understood and found out that he was lying. He was, not, he was not going crazy. That the white man indeed was behind the coup d'etat. The white powers, the white infrastructure of society was behind the coup d'etat of Kwame Nkrumah. Read that. Psalms, chapter 64, verse 8. Mm. So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Time reveals everything. Time reveals everything. God says they're gonna, he's going to make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. They told on themselves. When Kwame Nkrumah wrote that book, people thought he was crazy. It took 10 years, 15 years later, for two white men to do the research and found out what he was saying was true. And they revealed it. God said he's going to cause their what? So they shall make their own tongue to fall upon themselves. Read. All that see them shall flee away. Mm -hmm. All that see them shall flee away. Get me Luke 12 what Christ commanded us to do. I believe it's Luke 12 and verse, look for the verse for me, about revealing the secrets, yes. Luke chapter 12, watch this. This is what God commands us. This is what all the pastors in Ghana should be doing. Not teaching you white man Jesus, not jumping down in these churches, acting crazy, acting wild like a, like a buffoon, no. That's what I said earlier, the time of playing church is over. It's time to wake up and stand up for the laws of God. Read that. Matthew chapter 10, verse 26. Mm -hmm. Fear them not, therefore, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. God says, fear them not, for there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed. God is revealing all the evils that the so-called white men and the other nations have done to us. Read. And hid, that shall not be known, uh -huh. what I tell you in darkness. That speak ye in light. Speak ye in light. Make it known to all the sons and daughters of Africa what happened to our people. Make it known to all the sons and daughters of Africa that you are the Israelites. God says to speak it openly. All the assassination attempts, make it known. Them trying to push homosexuality and, COVID and mandatory COVID-19 vaccinations here, make it known. Don't be afraid. We're not afraid. I know these men are not afraid. These brothers right here, the deacons, the captains, we're not afraid. Your pastors is afraid. Your pastors is afraid to make it known. I'm going to show you why. Is that it? No, sir. What I tell you in darkness, uh -huh. that speak ye in light. Come on. And what ye hear in the ear, mm. that preach ye upon the housetops. Now, go back to the, um, right here. So we read Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. The only man that could save us, brothers and sisters, is Jesus the Christ. Read Luke chapter 1, verse 68. And we read about Christ earlier. Black man with white woolly hair. Luke chapter 1, verse 68. Yes, sir. Luke mm. chapter 1, verse 68. Mm. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Blessed be the Lord God of Israel. Come on. For he has visited and redeemed his people. He has visited and redeemed his people. Come on. And have raised up a horn of salvation for us uh -huh. in the house of his servant David. Come on. As he spake by the mouth of, of his holy prophets. Read. Which have been since the world began. Come on. That we should be saved from our enemies. It says we should be saved. Future tense. Saved from our enemies. So who's going to save us from our enemies? The black man, the black Messiah, Jesus the Christ. We used to scream black power.